I think Joe Spolsky is this guy here with the ping pong paddle. He uh, he coined this term, leaky abstractions. Okay. Uh, when was this? I don't. Oh, okay. So previous and next. So he wrote this in 2002. An abstraction is designed to hide complexity from you. He uses TCP protocol. It okay. is the the it's the protocol that makes the internet work. The how mm -hmm. how computers send information to each other over the network. Mm -hmm. Um. And underneath that, there's an IP protocol. You can read this in more detail later, but he's basically saying that TCP is a reliable transport protocol in that when you send a packet, it gives you a pretty good guarantee that the like the data will get there in the correct order. Okay. Uh, like, like, like you send a stream of bytes over the TCP connection, then the computer that's receiving the bytes will get the bytes in the same order that you sent it. Okay. And that's actually very non-trivial to do, uh, mm -hmm. but, but, that, but it works. <laughs> okay. And the weird thing is that TCP depends on a lower level protocol called IP, which does not give that guarantee. IP is just like, hey, you send a fixed number of bytes and then maybe it'll get there, maybe it won't, I don't know. That, that's what IP gives you. <laughs> okay. so, so TCP is implemented on top of IP. That's why you call it, they call it the magic of TCP. How did they do it on top of a, a layer IP, which is very, very brittle, very, very failure prone. And that's an example of like, oh, it's actually the low level is actually not very nice. And in, a, in order to make, the data go across uh, and, and in a reliable way is actually kind of complicated and non-trivial. You have to come up with some uh, tricks to make it happen. But well, I'm going to put an abstraction over it so don't, you don't have to understand all the tricks that we do under the hood. Okay. And then, so, so to you, it looks like you're just sending a stream of bytes over and it just works. Okay. Um, that's an abstraction. A abstraction takes something complex and gives you a simplified view of or simplified API, simplified way of working with that uh, thing. It's uh, like an interface, basically. Yeah, it is like an interface. In the design patterns book, there's a pattern called the facade. A facade is like a fake appearance, right? It is it, like a costume, almost like, like e even though I am really complicated on the inside, I put on a costume and I pretend for you that I'm really simple. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm really nice, even though I'm in reality, I'm not. Um, the job of an abstraction is to cover up all those ugly details. Okay. And so when he uses the word leaky, what he means is like the, the abstraction doesn't work that there's some ugliness that's showing up trying to hide it isn't working anymore costume has these holes or the costume is malfunctioning so you can actually see the ugliness inside and that, that kind of thing happens you know when when something unexpected is happening in the in the case of the ip the, the tcp ip thing is like well it, you can still have an unreliable network if the network not connected in a nice way then things will get really slow or, or if your if your network cable was cut then that you will definitely not get the bits over right that uh, um, right. there there's cases that the no matter how fancy your mechanism is will still break sql is actually sql <laughs> sql itself is a very fancy abstraction right. over how data is stored and retrieved mm -hmm. but then there's also on top of sql there's classes of fancy orms they're trying mm -hmm. to provide you an abstraction to write the code without touching sql itself because mm -hmm. variety of reasons but um okay. but i basically what an orm uh, orm like in java is hibernate in javascript Type ORM is pretty uh, popular in the JavaScript community now as an ORM. SQL itself is a very 
sort of large, complicated language. Mm-hmm. And if you try to put a facade over something that's already large and complicated, you're trying to wrap the large and complicated thing. There's just a lot of opportunities for abstraction leaks when you do something like that. So the prob the problem is the user of the ab- abstraction does not understand what's inside of it. So when the problem comes, they don't really know what exactly is the problem. But that that's a potential problem. Yeah, that that's what he's pointing to. If the user is too dependent on the abstraction, the the user is too dependent on not knowing the ugly details. Then when when they actually need to know what they are, he just has, has to start from zero. He has no knowledge of that stuff. You can interpret what he's saying as the the concept of abstraction. It does not work one hundred percent of the time. You would like to be able to pretend that the complicated thing is simple, but it only works some percentage of the time. Sometimes that doesn't work because your 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 program is just not working as you expect it to. And when that happens, it's not good enough to pretend it's simple anymore. Right. But what's the solution of this? <laughs> he doesn't really give you a solution, but to me,、uh, what it says is you should reevaluate the value of an abstraction. An abstraction can be anything that is trying to represent itself as a dramatic simplification, right?、Mm-hmm. That, that's how they usually sell frameworks and libraries to you. Look, using Flutter. You can build beautiful mobile apps very、sure. easily, and and they will be very performant. And then development is fast and easy, and it's it's very flexible and expressive. Of it's all it's all good. It's all good, and it's very simple. And they they will never tell you about those times when the abstraction is failing, and and then you actually need to understand what happens in the internal. Right. Wait, but isn't this all the like modern programming language? I mean, they are all abstraction of the bottom layer language.、Yeah. But I don't know how to code the in the say assembly to、mm-hmm. like code such a complicated app. So I have to use the scaffolding of the modern programming language and not the framework and stuff. Um. Well, you think you have to,、uh, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't. You don't have to use anything. You can learn assembly language and code everything in assembly language if you wanted to. Right. It's probably not a very efficient way to do it. Right. But there's a trade-off, and my point is that it is a trade-off. It's not the only option you have.、Mm, that、But、is true. Because it, it, like in in a lot of. Uh, modern projects that I've seen, obviously, it varies from company to company, from project to project. But what I have seen is, we we tend to take on a lot of dependencies. Not not only a lot of dependencies, but a lot of large dependencies.、Mm-hmm. That that、uh, they do a lot of non-trivial stuff in order to abstract you from the complicated things. But each one of those. Has a cost associated with it, and、uh, and don't one hundred percent abstract you from what happens internally, because all of them that that's the law of leaky abstractions. All non-trivial abstractions, to some degree, are leaky. Each one that you take in, whether it's React or Express JS or Nest JS or Expo or you know. Uh, just but whatever framework it is, every single one of them, to some degree, are leaky. And and the more, the more they try to take on, like the more ambitious that、uh, that project is, the the more problems it tries to solve, the the more complicated their internals are,、um, and the the more likely that there will be some leaky, like the the harder job they have to sort of keep. Keep the reality from you, right? Yeah, I think it's a case by case choice. It's like if you can、uh, work around, not work around, work within the leaky abstraction and get what you need to be done done, and that that's good. But if it goes beyond what you need to be done, it's leaky. Then you can't do it. 
with this abstraction. You have to either do something else or you implement it yourself or whatever. Yeah, you, you have to look at it as a trade-off, I think. Maybe a lot of people are too eager to jump into a cool framework that's like trending. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's my feeling. Yeah, I see a lot of this in uh, my company too. The the folks just love the tools. They are like too uh, attracted by the tool, like how fancy the tool is, but they don't really want to know what's inside of it. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. So. And and that's that's like uh, exactly what Joe is talking about. 